Well, welcome back, everyone. I just got off the phone with Rob and we were discussing markets and the incredibly big moves that have been taking place. It's a trader's paradise. Let's get right into the market move. We're going to start off with the S&P 500 on a daily candlestick chart with the Champion Trend Pack Toolkit applied to it. We've also got the MSR or Visual Trend Channel in play. What I want to get your eyes focused in on is how we ended the week where on the 16th, we got a champion trend buy signal. We were also shifting from a sell signal state on the champion cross to a buy signal state. It's just at the very beginning. The apex crossed over there and you do have that block down here telling us that we're in a buy signal state on the S&P E-minis. Price is above the channel, which is now rising. And in fact, we got a wealth signal remaining under the candle, which is getting us to stage two all in one fell swoop. Stage two of what? Well, the Champion Trend Pack Toolkit has got a sequence that it typically follows. And when we go from stage one, which is Champion Trend and Champion Cross, to stage two, which usually would mean wealth signal, especially after going from red to green, we're in a much higher probability state to move to stage three. But there are a couple of conditions here. The NASDAQ has been in control of price. And the NASDAQ, as you look at it, and we're going to look at it top down, if you will, here, the NASDAQ contains those heavyweight MAG7 stocks. It does not yet have that same advanced signal as the S&P, but it's trying to play catch up. So what you can see is price action on the NASDAQ for the end of the week, holding above that channel, actually breaking out on Thursday, following through by holding above and back testing the top of the channel. Now, it's not in a buy signal state yet. We don't have a champion trend buy plaque as we do on the ES. We don't have that champion cross, but it's playing catch up. And what we're seeing is a tug of war, which is an embedded negative divergence. And you can use the Russell as a poster child for this. What do I mean? Take a look at the Russell futures to end the week. The daily candle has a wick on it that perforated the top of that visual trend channel, but it closed back down within it. Technically, the Russell is still in a sell signal state, but it's not screaming out, sell me at this moment. It's screaming out, I'm not ready yet. Now, if we see that Russell come up above the top of the MSR channel, the visual trend channel, which it was above on Friday's trade, we then have what typically happens happening, which means the Russell tends to foreshadow moves in the bigger markets. Why? Because it's a much more sensitive market to the key issues we're dealing with, the cost of credit, which will directly impact profitability. And this is that moment to really understand this. Why? We're seeing the economy signaled by consumer retail sales revise down month after month. We did beat this last week, and it generated that big breakout on Thursday, and we got some modest follow through on Friday. The Russell is not convinced as of yet. However, on Monday, if we do see the Russell remain for the majority of the day above the top of that visual trend channel, it would support the likely continued action on the NASDAQ and the S&P, and for the NASDAQ, most importantly, getting into a buy signal state. The worry at this stage is that we may have used up a lot of that rocket fuel, and you can see that on four-hour charts and one-hour charts. Now, I'm not, not going to bring that up right now. What I am going to bring up, though, is it's a trader's market. If we are able to break out and continue higher on the Russell, it's a trader's market on both the NASDAQ, the S&P, and the Russell itself. If we are unable to, or we poke our heads above and break back down a bearish reversal, it becomes a trader's market on the short side. This market is full of opportunity and, of course, risk as well. I hope that you're taking advantage of the increased ranges and over in the active trader room at becomebettertrader.com, over at Wealth Charts during the hour of power, every morning I take the time to share with folks how I'm trading what I think is likely to happen, and we're using 
this suite of tools to help us understand which stage we are in in the move. So take that step back. If the NASDAQ joins the S&P, it would be in stage one, maybe even do what the S&P did, jump into stage two right away, which would imply that it has the chance to move up faster, tag the all-time highs. We just need to see that Russell also conform to the move. On Monday, a pump followed by a dump, possible. A move higher on the momentum from the end of last week, probable. But that move higher has to really see buying beget buying in order to keep this market pointed up. Otherwise, a likely pullback to refuel, rejuvenate could be in store. And that would be absolutely normal ahead of trying to make new all-time highs. Thanks for being the best students in the world. Thanks for listening into this video. Hope you're having an incredible weekend. We look forward to sharing our insights with you in videos just like these as we move through this very important time in markets. And folks, have a great rest of your day. Bye for now all.